Hello guys and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included. Now I'm gonna start a new series which is called uh, Little Automations to Improve Your Base. And we're gonna start out right away with the Smart Battery Automation. As you can see um, I have simulated some kind of a regular base. Uh, we've got th uh, power from three different sources. We got coal generators over here, we got a hydrogen generator over here and we also got a petroleum generator over here and all of these are connected to the same grid to basically simu simulate your base. Um, for consumers I've put three liquid tepidizers. The only thing they do is actually heat up the super coolant. We just use them to simulate any kind of consumers. Now let's check how basic automation works. Uh, with the smart battery you just hook up with automation wires uh, directly to the power generators and you set up a low and a high threshold here. As you can see our coal generators are supposed to start when the uh, energy stored into that smart battery is below 10% capacity and they are going to stop at 70% capacity. So that way I'm making sure that the coal generators are not running all the time and therefore just consuming coal uh, but not um, adding any power to the system because there's no, uh, not more uh, consumers active than the uh, coal generators could provide with power. So this is a very basic automation everyone should make use of or everyone probably already knows. But I think there's a lot more to it. Uh, as I've already told you in this simulation we have uh, power from three different sources and we also want to prioritize that. Why would you actually want to prioritize that? That's because um, some energy sources are cleaner than others, some uh, provide or require additional duplicate labor or yeah, uh, some resources are abundant on your map and others aren't. So you somehow want to prioritize your power generation and I'm going to simulate that over here. So you can see that for every type of uh, generator I've set up its own uh, smart battery as you can see here and the priority is set up using these thresholds. So basically let's say for our example we want to run the petroleum general all the time that is because for some reason we have access to abundant petroleum in our base maybe from a petroleum boiler or anything. So we set that up to 30% low threshold and 80% high threshold. So we are basically starting volume generator very early at 30% capacity and we let it lo uh, run for very long until 80%. Now because the petroleum generator only provides 2 kilowatts of power and the tepidizers consume I think 3 kilowatts uh, combined, yeah that's correct, uh, it won't be sufficient to just run the petroleum generator to run the base just from petroleum. So we will need other sources of power. And for that we have a secondary priority that's going to be the hydrogen generator for whatever reason in your base, maybe you have access to a hydrogen vent or anything, uh, you want to consume that hydrogen at secondary priority. And just in case of emergency you want to provide enough power for your base, just in case the other two can't keep up, you want to have some coal generators in reserve. And that is because yeah, they pollute the environment, they require a lot of your precious coal and also someone has to carry the coal to the coal generator, so they are lowest priority. So and through this automation, remember we've set uh, the petroleum generator to 30 and 80, uh, we just lower that uh, for the hydrogen gen uh, generator. So we basically let this one start if the capacity is below 20% and until 60%. That way we make sure it has lower priority than the petroleum generator. And only in case of emergency we want to make use of our coal as well. So we set that up to 10 and let's say 50% to stay in the line here. So 60-20, 50-10. So just 
when we are short before an outage, we're gonna start the coal generators, and we also stop them very early because we want them. We won't. Uh, we don't want them to run all the time. Actually, let's simulate what happens. As I've already told you, the tepidizers consume more than the petroleum generator provides, so the petroleum generator is going to run all the time and therefore providing 2 kilowatts of power, at least until the petroleum reservoir has been yeah, emptied, so to say. And also because of the 3 kilowatts consumed here, the hydrogen generator is going to run all the time as well. This one will provide, I think, 800 watts. So combined they produce 2.8 kilowatts. And maybe as you just saw, 2.8 kilowatts is just not sufficient to run three um, liquid tepidizers from it. Eventually the coal generators start for a very short moment. So this way we have set up a decent priority. We can also simulate that. I'm just gonna stop or destroy the uh, gas pipe that is transporting the hydrogen to the hydrogen generator. We're gonna see that uh, the remaining hydrogen is being consumed in there and once there's nothing left, uh, the hydrogen generator should actually stop. Oh, there's still something inside as well. Then it's gonna stop. So 800 watts uh, less in the grid and therefore we are 2 kilowatts with this 3 kilowatts consumed and as you just saw the coal generators jumped in to actually provide uh, the yeah, so required power. So this is an easy method to automate uh, your power generation in your base uh, just to make sure that you're running from the correct sources so to say. But there's a bit more to it as well. Um, often you end up in a situation where you have multiple conditions to be met, so to say, and in that case you just add an AND gate in there. For instance, let me simulate that uh, automation. Let's place an AND gate here, turn it around. So we are going to hook up the output to the coal generators and one of the inputs will still be uh, the smart battery. But let's for instance assume you don't have much coal left uh, into your base and that's something very annoying to happen. You can simulate that with a weight plate for instance. You only give a green signal when there's above let's say 500 kilograms or something. So kind of brush a bit of coal on top of it as well and that's gonna be dicked by where is it? Ah, Camille. And there you can see uh, the weight is being detected 600 kilograms of coal that's correct and therefore also the weight plate is uh, detecting a green signal but still the battery also has to send a green signal so this way we just added a secondary condition to run our coal generators and in that, in that case if every bit of coal we have is piled up on this uh, weight plate we can make sure that we will never run out of coal. And in some very rare conditions you as well might have even more conditions then you just place multiple end gates in a row and maybe you could send it temperature sensor or something here uh, let's say the temperature has to be above or let's say below uh, 70 degrees that's because maybe your coal generators will start breaking at 75 degrees so you want to make them stop before and you hook that up to the second AND gate as well and therefore you need another green signal to actually run and when the connection is, or when the condition is not met, just simulate by pressing the button here, the entire system will have a red signal and therefore the coal generators will not run until they finally receive a green signal again. So this is a very easy method to have multiple conditions met in a row. So I think this is it for this video. If you have any further questions, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I will con uh, I will keep to just 
yeah, post or keep you updated on little automations in this series. Thanks and goodbye.